The events in Bangladesh have unfolded almost like a gripping novel. Until two days ago, Sheikh Hasina dominated the story. She was the main character, but now she's gone. So who will take over? Who will write Bangladesh's story now? Let's look at the new faces. First on our list is Vakaru Zaman, Bangladesh's army chief. We've been telling you about him. He addressed the nation after Hasina's departure. But who is he? Zaman was born in Dhaka in 1966. He studied in both Bangladesh and London. He married the daughter of Bangladesh's former army chief and that made him family to Sheikh Hasina. He is her cousin-in-law. Zaman has had a three-decade-long military career. He's helped modernize the army. He oversaw peacekeeping operations. He also received multiple medals. And amid all of this, he worked very closely with Sheikh Hasina. Until six months ago, he was the chief of general staff. But on the 23rd of June, Sheikh Hasina promoted him. She made him the army chief. Hasina thought it was a guarantee of loyalty, and that perhaps was her biggest mistake. On Monday, she wanted the army chief and the army to crack down on protesters, but Zaman refused. Insider details suggest that she reminded him of his appointment. She even asked him to return the favor, but Zaman did not budge. His officers wouldn't fire at the protesters, and that changed everything. It ended Sheikh Hasina's reign. But the army does not necessarily have a good reputation in Bangladesh. They were behind assassinations. They've staged coups. So what will it be this time? The army says it will meet student leaders. It will hold talks with political parties. It will help form the interim government. And who will be in this government? Now, one name has, has been doing the rounds. It stands out, and that is Khalda Zia. That's the second major character in this story. Khalida Zia is Bangladesh's first female prime minister. She was born in India. Her husband was a military officer. She served, he served as Bangladesh's president. In 1981, he was assassinated. Three years later, Zia became the head of her husband's party, the Bangladesh Nationalist Party of BNP. In 1991, she won the election. She failed to get a majority though, so she joined hands with jamaat e Islami. From 1991 to 2006, only two leaders ruled Bangladesh, Sheikh Hasina and Khalid Azia. They took power one after the other and they fought what was called the Battle of the Begums. But in 2007, Khalid Azia was arrested for corruption. In 2018, she got a 10-year prison term and she spent most of this time in hospital because of her poor health. When Hasina fled Dhaka, Zia was under house arrest. Hours later, she was released. But she's unlikely to join politics, again because of her poor health. So there is the army on one side and the main opposition party, the BNP, on the other. Does Bangladesh want them? Not really. Which brings us to the third key character in this story, Nahid Islam. You may have never heard of him because until two months ago, he was a nobody in Bangladesh. He's a university student, a student at Dhaka University. He studies sociology. He's an activist. In the month of June, Bangladesh brought back the, the job quota system. It led to a student protest. They called it the Students Against Discrimination Movement. And Nahid Islam is one of their national coordinators. Since then, he's been vocal against Sheikh Hasina, but it was not easy for him. In July, he was kidnapped twice. He was tortured and even left unconscious under a bridge. Despite everything, he remained at the thick of things. He led protests against Sheikh Hasina until the very last day, and now she's gone. But Islam says he's not done yet. The students want an interim government, but they do not want the army or the BNP leading it. They want this man, Muhammad Yunus. Bangladesh's Nobel laureate, the fourth character in our story. Yunus was born in Chittagong. He got his PhD in the US. After 1971, he returned to Bangladesh. As the country struggled with poverty, Yunus came up with a plan, microcredit or small loans. For the people who do not qualify for bank loans, they get small loans. The first experiment worked, so Yunus launched the Grameen Bank. It gave loans worth $34 billion to 10 million people. The recovery rate was 97%. So it was a success. Yunus was awarded the Nobel Prize in 2006. He was called the banker to the poor. But soon the banker wanted to be a politician. 
Yunus wanted to form a political party. Sheikh Hasina did not like it. There was friction. In 2009, the government of Bangladesh started investigating Muhammad Yunus. He was accused of extorting rural women. Hasina said, and I'm quoting, he was sucking blood from the poor. In 2011, he was removed as head of the Grameen Bank and accused of corruption and embezzlement. Muhammad Yunus has more than 100 cases against him. In January this year, he was sentenced to prison. He hasn't been jailed yet. When Hasina fled Dhaka, Muhammad Yunus was in Paris. His spokesperson says he's agreed to the request of the students. He will be chief advisor to the interim government. But the question is, who will call the shots? Will the BNP try to exploit the political vacuum now? Will the army rule Bangladesh or will students have a say in government formation? At this point, all stakeholders remain adamant. All of them want their demands met. But the thing is, not everyone can rule the country. So we'll have to wait and see who makes the cut. Across continents, one powerful news source. bringing you diverse perspectives on the issues that matter. We go beyond the boundaries to give you that little extra about every sporting moment. So thank you for making First Post 5 million strong. We're counting on your support and you can trust us to bring you the news unfiltered and unvarnished. Climate change is on our doorstep. It's time for a revolution to take root. And it starts with 1.4 billion Indians. It starts with one tree. One tree for humanity. One tree for Mother Earth. One tree for our future. Project One Tree, a News 18 network initiative.